Hi everybody and welcome back to video number four on uh, long-term liabilities. So hopefully you have a much better understanding of how we calculate the value of a bond for discounts and premiums and no discount or premium. So now we're going to look at how we retire the bonds at maturity. Now in this case it's very easy if it's retired at maturity. All we do is undo the journal entry that we originally did to record the cash we received. Here we're going to make the liability go away with a $100,000 debit, and then we credit cash to pay that $100,000 back. At this point in time, remember, at maturity, even if it's sold at a discount or even if it's sold at a premium, it will be fully amortized. So the carrying value is now going to be equal to the par value at maturity. So there's no other journal entry required. How nice. <laughs> okay. However, sometimes we retire the bond before maturity. I personally have only seen that done once. Um, and it's called callable. If the bonds are callable, then the issuer gets the opportunity, if they want, the option to call those bonds back. And um, when I was at Chrysler, we did just that because we were paying a high risk premium at the time for those bonds and we called them back uh, to issue bonds that had a more favorable interest rate. So if these $100,000 callable bonds are retired on July 1st, after the very first interest payment, then the bond carrying value is going to be um, uh, $104,500. And the call premium, that means we are going to spend $3,000 for the privilege of calling this, um, we're going to spend that. So our cash here is going to be that $100,000 plus the $3,000 call premium. That's how much cash we're going to pay. The bonds payable have a $100,000 bonds payable, just like normal. That's the par value of the bond. Now, the premium on that bond, the carrying value was $104,500. So we have a premium of $4,500 on top of that hundred thousand dollars here. So now what we need to balance this is a fifteen hundred dollar credit and that's going to be the gain we're going to have on this bond. Okay that's recording the value of the bond when the carrying value is greater than the retirement price. So we ret our carrying value was a hundred and four thousand five hundred it was greater than our the cash we were going to have to pay so that means we're going to have a gain on the retirement of fifteen hundred dollars all right uh, we would do that similarly if there was a discount and we would have a loss or how we ever it came out okay so now we're going to explain the types of notes and prepare the entries to account for notes. And in this case, a note payable, this would be something that we maybe borrow from the bank. We're going to have a note, and we're going to have interest, and away we go. Here, we're going to have an installment note. And this is where we uh, would make monthly, probably, payments to pay that back. In this case, there were three annual payments plus interest. And we're going to calculate that. I'm not going to show you a specific uh, spreadsheet as to how to do that, but you can go into the uh, table B.3, pick up the PV factor for um, this three years. It's going to be 2.5771. Divide that into the present value, which is the 60000 that you borrowed. And that means your payment is going to be 23282 each year. Okay, So, 
when we calculate, when we set this note up, we're going to debit cash because we get the cash for $60,000. We'll credit notes payable. That's a liability that we have to pay that back after three years. And it's 8% installment note. Now, when we go into the table, we're also going to look under the 8% uh, uh, column. Okay, so next, let's see how that looks when we do a loan amortization table. Here we have our beginning balance of 60000 We take 8% of that 60000 We get 4800 But that's how much interest expense we have. But we are having a payment of 23282 so 18,482 of that goes to print to reduce the principal. So if I subtract the 18,482 from 60,000 here, I get my ending balance of 41,518. And so that ending balance comes over here to the next year's beginning balance. And we go through the process again. We take 8% of that 41,518, that gives us um, um, 3,321. So you can see the interest expense is going down as we pay the loan down. This is what's called effective interest rate. And so uh, next, that means that we're paying a bigger portion here to principal out of our 23,282. And now our ending balance of 21557 we bring over here. We have 1725 of interest. That gives me, an, uh, we'll pay down 21557 of principal. And if I add my principal up, I get 60000 If I add the interest up, I get 9848 That gives me... 69,846 in total payments. Okay. And you can follow that in in the uh, uh, table uh, B.3. Okay. So, how do we do how do we journalize these little beauties? Well, we do it like this. Here's 2021, 2022 and 2023. Our interest expense here, here, and here, we're going to have those here, here, and here. Similarly, we pay the principal here, here, and here, and our cash is the same in each of those years. And that's how we would record installment payments. Very nice. This is, by the way, is how you would calculate um, if you were purchasing a car. You would be able to calculate your monthly payments. You would have to have 12 of them instead of the three in this case. But with a spreadsheet, it's easy to do. Or if you want to do a home mortgage, you do it the same way. We would have 30 years, 12 months, 360. But once you set the spreadsheet up, it's pretty easy to do that. And if anybody's interested, send me an email and I'll show you exactly how to do that in Excel. Okay, so mortgages. Speaking of mortgages, this is a legal agreement that helps protect the lender if the borrower fails to make the required payments. It gives the lender the right to be paid out of the cash proceeds from the sale of the borrower's assets, specifically identified in the mortgage contract. So let's look. Um, I guess we not going to show a specific example for that, but we would do that the same way that we would do that three-year example they just showed. We would just do it over however many years the mortgage was, normally 15 years or 30 years. All right, debt to equity ratio. This is a common metric that we use in uh, evaluating a company and the bonds and notes we can have different kinds of bonds and notes 
We have secured and unsecured. We can have term and serial. We talked about callable, but we can also have a convertible bond. That means that we're going to take that, uh, we, we can convert that uh, uh, bond into a uh, common stock if we want. And then we have registered and bearer bonds as well. Now again, I'll point out the fact that at the bottom of the of each of these PowerPoints, there is a uh, these definitions of all those terms that are used on this slide in the speaker notes. So you can take a look at what that means. Okay, makes sense. Good definitions to know. All right, so if we do the debt to equity ratio now, we're going to take our total liabilities and divide it by total equity. And that's going to, that ratio is going to help you understand the risk of a company's financing structure. Uh, the higher your liabilities, no surprise, the greater the risk, right? So, what you're going to do from this, you're going to know your debt to equity ratio here. Um, you're going to want to see that the smaller the liabilities, the smaller the risk. Now you might say, well, that's easy. Just don't borrow. Well, that is conservative, no question. But as long as I can take money that I borrow and make more money from that, then the interest expense it costs me, that's a good deal for the company, right? And so then um, we have to be careful, though, that we, we weather bad times and take advantage of good times, of course, but in bad times, we still want to be able to pay down the interest expense associated with that borrowing. So the, I think you're going to find that the higher uh, or the worse your debt to equity ratio is, uh, that's going to mean that the bank is going to get more and more nervous and charge you more and more interest as it perceives more risk that you have. So if we look at this, we can look at Nike. Uh, Nike's liabilities are greater than their equity in in the current year and the previous year. But two years ago, the equity was greater. Now, the way I look at it, liabilities are outsiders' claims on our assets, whereas equity is owners' claims on our assets. So we don't want, as both of these companies have, uh, a debt-to-equity ratio that's greater than um one, because that means that my liabilities are greater than my equity. But you see here how I can compare different sized companies under Armour and Nike and still be able to evaluate them on a common structure here. Okay, that probably represents a great place for us to stop this video. And when we return, we'll finish off with video five and compute some bond pricing, which hopefully you have a pretty good idea on how to do at this point in time. Until then, bye for now.